this is an important slide where we are going to talk about different big data use case and how different industries are trying to you know uh, solve some interesting problems using these big data use cases so we will start with uh, I'll, I'll take a couple of use cases here. So social media is one of the use cases. So let's talk about that. Uh, everyone uses Facebook, right? Uh, doing a lot of social networking on that. So Facebook generates a lot of data because a lot of people are doing, you know, a lot of activities like they are uploading photos, videos, you know, uh, liking the and putting the comments on different uh, posts and creating posts. Uh, you know, joining groups and all stuff like that. So basically, Facebook generates lots of data. It's a one big data source. Now, how does Facebook make the revenue out of it? So it uses big data technology, by the way, to to increase their revenue model. And uh, I'm sure all of you know that Facebook generates revenue through advertisements. One of the premium way of generating an uh, adver uh, revenue is through advertisement. So how does they uh, make money out of it? So I'll, I'll take two minutes to explain that. Uh, in the advertisement industry, by the way, there are two types of advertisement mode which are very prevalent. One is called mass advertisement, one is called targeted advertisement. What is mass advertisement? Mass advertisement means, uh, let's take an example. If two people, one person sitting in US, in New York, one person sitting in India, in Bangalore, and both of them are watching the television at the same time, Maybe different geographical time zone is fine, but then at the same time, they are watching live match, football match. Now, if there is any advertisement that comes in between that program, both of these users will have to see the ad, right? Now, if a person from US doesn't really want to see that ad, still he can't do much. He has to see this ad, unless he switch off the channel. So what I'm trying to highlight a point is, the advertisement industry who is trying to broadcast the ads in between any program, they don't really care whether users are interested to view this ad or not. They just broadcast it to the mass set of users. This is called mass advertisement, okay? And that was very prevalent in the market and it is still happening. But Facebook has revolutionized the entire advertisement industry by you know, introducing something called targeted advertisement. So they do targeted advertisement. What does, what does that mean? So Everybody is registered on Facebook and everybody does a lot of activities on Facebook. So what Facebook does, it actually identifies your activities. Basically, it analyzes and records your activities, every user's activity. And then it analyzes and it finds out what are the likes and dislikes of this user. Again, it does sentiment analysis here and then try to find out your likes and dislikes. So if, for example, a person who is you know joining some sports groups, uploading sports videos, liking sports pages, then the, it will find out that yes, this person is more interested towards a sports activity tool. So let us try to show him an advertisement which is related to sports. For example, in his area, there is a live football match happening. Uh, it's, it's a good idea to show him an advertisement where he can go and purchase the ticket for that match. And he would probably like to click on that and, and buy that ticket or or, you know, view that website rather than a person who is not at all interested in sports. So what Facebook does, they first understand your recent activities, they analyze this that using some machine learning algorithm and then they try to do, try to find out your likes and dislikes and accordingly they suggest you some ads on your Facebook page. Now how does they materialize the revenue? When you click on the ad, Facebook gets a revenue share just by clicking on that. If you don't do anything, just you click on the ad, Facebook gets a revenue share. If you click on the ad and if you go to that page and then if you do some transaction, then Facebook gets a major share of revenue. So there are various revenue models, but that's how Facebook makes a revenue. So imagine if there are 1 billion people across the globe who are logged in right now on Facebook and everybody makes one single click on Facebook page, on their respective Facebook page. You can see the Facebook can generate huge amount of money right with this with the right analysis so to that is so now we can easily understand that it is very important for facebook to generate or to do this analysis very accurately and they have massive hadoop clusters available in house 
uh, where they run all these machine learning algorithms and they do a lot of processing, building models and doing predictions and stuff like that. So that's one area where they use big data technologies heavily. Okay. Uh, then we'll also talk about uh, healthcare. Healthcare is one another area which is very, very heavily used uh, for these kind of analysis. Um, there was one recent, uh, not very recent, but there was an uh, you know article where healthcare basically healthcare and life sciences they are actually uh, one of the article was mentioning about you know I'm sure everyone heard about Ebola virus, so it was very very uh, you know dangerous virus it is actually and it was harming a lot of people's health. So let's say a company, I'm just taking one use case where uh, there is a healthcare in the, uh, you know, organization who wants to find out how many people are impacted with Ebola in a New York City, for example. Now, they can't ask everybody to go on and manually do that test, right? It's not practically possible. So then how do they come up with this prediction? Because they need to definitely, uh, you know, update it to government and everyone that how this this virus is spreading and all that. Uh, so they can take some immediate action on that. So what they have done, they actually, whenever this kind of problem comes, right, whenever you want to classify, this is called classification in machine learning. You want to classify whether a person is having Ebola or not. Simple. That is called classification. So when I have some classification problem, normally what they do in classification algorithm, they, they, they use sampling. So they take sample set of people, and they choose them from different age, different, you know, whatever demographics and everything. So they basically ask them to go for this test physically. They go for the test, they get their records, that's their actual data. This is the real test which is done. And that data has been fed to the algorithm. Now algorithm will learn that data and then build a model out of it. Algorithm has been already clearly given that out of, let's say, 1 lakh people, 50% uh, or I would say, let's say 30% of the people are impacted with Ebola in that sample set of data. So that 30% people's data is there, there are different parameters that are there. And along with that, the result is there, whether he or she is diagnosed with Ebola or not. So this algorithm will build this knowledge base, they create model, we call it as model in machine learning. And once the models are prepared, then you, you send some test data to these models to train, train your algorithms and then basically come up with a actual prediction. So what they do now is they have all the New York City people data. Why? Because everybody normally in US, everybody will have their you know insurance and all that through which you can get details about a person, their health records and everything. So they can share this data again to the algorithms and then algorithm will find out whether this person's parameters are matching with the people who are diagnosed with Ebola or not. And likewise, it tries to categorize, classify them, whether he or she will have Ebola or not. So that's how it, it basically, uh, you know, process all the test data and classify them into different buckets. And that's how it figures out what percentage of total population may get impacted with Ebola. So remember always, in any machine learning data analytics techniques, it always revolves with probability. There is always a probability, which means you can't guarantee, you cannot guarantee and say that, you know, it will definitely be this much percentage. You will always say the probability is this much, right? It may be that much, maybe more, maybe less. So that's how they do. So that's a, one area where they do, again, they load all the data on, on Hadoop clusters and then they use all these uh, machine learning algorithms using Mahout APIs and then they try to solve this problem. So that's one area. Uh, Last, last use case, finance industry. Again, finance industry, very, very uh, important industry and a lot of stuff are being done there. So basically, they do it for threat analysis, they do it for uh, credit card fraud detection, debit card fraud detection, a lot of real-time analytics has been done using big data technologies. Uh, uh, there is a, a use case where, you know, credit scoring and analysis. So let's say a person wants to take a loan, he goes to a bank, Let's say he's holding an account with Citibank and Bank of America, but he goes to take a loan with to Chase Bank. Now, what they do is that they these banks will have an internal alliance network. So Chase Bank can legally get all the transaction data of the user who's asking for a loan from all the banks wherever he's holding an account with. So once it gets all the data, all his transaction data from all his banks, 
then they will analyze this data and then they will find out what is his income pattern and spending pattern and based on that they decide whether this person is eligible to take a loan or not whether will he be able to repay the emi in a given period time or not right so that is called uh, uh, you know that is basically one area where they they use lot of uh, big data technology for this slide is to basically help you understand uh, you know which all industries big data can be used so any industry which is generating data you can use big data technologies so a lot of uh, industries are using big data technologies